Cal from Kelly T Black Metal Reviews, and I'm here with Val Docker, the USBM Black and Death Metal artist hailing from Portland in the USA. Val Docker, welcome. Thanks for talking with, to me today. Oh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. How no, are you? I'm going really well. I'm going really well. I've been really excited to do this with you. And I just wanted to start with saying I know there's so many people that are already pretty familiar with what you do, but for those that might be watching that aren't, I do want to run through all the projects that you are behind because it's pretty impressive. <laughs> so Vardoka is behind some wickedly devastating projects such as Witchbones, Conduit of Chaos, Diancian Rites, Omnikinetic, Sengray De La Luna, Next Womb, and I'm not done yet, you're also a part of Devouring Serpents. You've just started a record label, Witchbones Productions. Have I missed anything? <laughs> Uh, no, I think that's pretty much the main source of it, just like anything that I'm doing for the most part. Um, I lose track of what I'm doing half the time. Uh, <laughs> it's, I mean, it is a lot of stuff. I think uh, the bulk of it is mostly because I'm at home, you mm -hmm. know, most of the time. I don't tour. I don't play live at the moment. Yeah. Uh, I don't really have a huge interest in that too much. Um, I just like creating music. I always have. Um, so it enables me to be able to just make massive amount of music that I like. I mean, production wise, you know, some people, you know, can harp and be like, oh, well, if you just took a little bit more time to do this and that, it's like, well, it's not what it's about for me. You know, it's, it's more of a atmosphere and emotion and just like what was in that moment for me versus like, you know, like I just released some new Witchbone stuff last night, you know, because of how I was feeling or whatever was going on. And it's just putting it out there you know it's not really necessarily like oh I have to find a big record label or I have to put it out myself through tapes or vinyl or anything like that it's just mostly like here here's music you know enjoy it like that's it you know? yeah well we we caught up probably around nine months ago now we did a zine interview with Metal Roos and even at that time you know Witchbones uh was the main focus then and you punched out so much content even in that time and now it's tenfold it was hard to know where to start with you so i want to start though with this record label because which one's production the launch of this you announced um not too long ago so i'd like to talk about what bands you seek to sign and distribute and who do you already have under your wings um at the moment right now it's mostly just friends bands to be honest with you like people that I talk to on the internet or I know personally yeah. um, and things that I like back 100%, you know, um, it's not all metal either. There's some like drone stuff that I have coming out um, probably around October, you know, with some really beautiful like vocals that are just like really haunting. And I, I just thought that even if, you know, my people that are into what I put out or whatever aren't into this, it's still something that I enjoy. And I want a cassette because I'm a fan, you know? Yeah, so yeah. it's mostly things like that, more or less, where it's, I'm putting out music that I want to hear. And if I don't already have a copy of it, it's like, well, you know, then I'll make it. And the majority of the stuff that I do is cassette, but I do have some vinyl releases, you know, of things that I know what will, will, people do want, you know what I mean? And um, uh, Gems labels actually uh, been helping with me with most of that you know we've kind of done split things to do costs and it's yeah. been uh been pretty awesome that's great i had a feeling you might work closely with gems so that's good to hear what was yeah. the driving force behind creating your own label it's mostly just working with so many different other labels and just kind of figuring out what it really was about and i just was like you know what i there's so many times where I've sent out Witchbones, Omnikinetic, uh, Next Room, just all kinds of stuff to different labels. And I'd either get a no, no response, or I would get a response. And then it would be like, okay, well, we can't release it for two years or a year. And yeah. like, I understand that's part of the music industry. You know I mean? It's, it, it is what it is, but it's like, if I have the funds to do it and I have a following, why not do it myself? You yeah. Know? Spend everything else at this point. So it's like, I figured I'd just mostly work on putting my stuff out there, but then it got to the point where it was like, well, people don't want to just hear my stuff. They want to hear other things too. And I felt like I can bring, I don't know, m my side of it, you know, to the world, uh, my own brand. So. It makes sense. It's good to see. And I hope it's a big success for you. That's for sure. 
I want to talk witch bones. I know you know that it's one of my favourite projects of yours um, and projects in general. <laughs> devastated when you announced that this was not going to be uh, a thing for you anymore and then you made us all very happy by telling us that you're still going to create with the Witchbones project. What was the reasoning for firstly ending this project and its subsequent resurrection? You know, I was drinking heavily at the time and um, I was just kind of in a spot where I just was like, you know, I just didn't want to do it. I was like, I felt like I was putting out too much material, like how we were talking about earlier. And um, it just seemed over to me. I just, it felt okay. over. And there was other things too. Um, I won't get into deep with it, but there was some like online shit that was just pissing me off and I just, I wasn't into it. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna start something that is fresh and brand new. And that was um, Omnikinetic. And that's been pretty successful so far. People seem to really like it. Right. Essentially, it is witch bones. It's just sped up. I felt like Omnikinetic was kind of a continuation of like the We Haunt Ourselves mm -hmm. witch bones stuff because it was a lot faster. Where witch bones now is definitely more at a like doom level pace. Okay. But yeah. Black metal. And um, I don't know. I talked to uh, Patrick from Iron Bonehead and uh, I was just sending him all these other projects that I was doing and he just was kind of not into it. He was just like, dude, you're just doing so much stuff all the time. He's like, why don't you just focus on like two projects? You know what I mean? And like maybe one being witch bones again, you know what I mean? Because that seems to work for you. You know what I mean? It's something that's not com completely different, but it's, it's better. And I don't know. I just, after thinking about it, I was like, people seem to really enjoy it. And I liked making the music at that time. So I was like, why not keep doing it? So and at this point, I mean, it is still, uh, it's a focus, maybe not the main focus, but I'm, I'll still be putting stuff out there, you know, through it. Yeah, great. Well, you surprised us yesterday with uh, dropping a, a bomb on us with a Witchbones album, well, an EP, uh, Night of the Warlock. And I've been heavily listening to that over the last couple of days. And uh, well, since yesterday, you're already getting really good comments on Bandcamp. But one of the, one of the questions people are asking is, like there was no promo for this. There was no sort of lead up to it. You just dropped it on us. What was the idea with just landing it, which we're not complaining, but can we expect to see this on a physical release or is this purely just for digital? Go have a listen. It'll have a physical. I've noticed that I just, I'll just drop stuff randomly just to see what the reaction is first. Yeah. You know, um, to be fair, I dropped um, the first song on that album I had dropped probably a month prior to this, maybe a little bit less as a, a demo or whatever, just to kind of see what the reaction, to see what people were feeling with it. And it was like, you know, it was whatever. People were just kind of like, oh, it's Witchbone's cool. And uh, I don't know, yesterday it's like, you know, just going through some shit and stuff like that, as I do. And um, I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna put it out there because this is how I feel right now. This is what I wanna do and I'm just gonna do it. I just. You know, I get so much shit all the time from other, some of my friends, some people that are in other record labels and they're like, why don't you just wait? Why don't you wait two years and then drop it? And I'm like, why? What's the point of that? I could be dead in two years and it could be sitting in my computer and it wouldn't be out there. Cause like the whole goal for this was just to kind of, you know, put my stamp in the metal community, whether small or big or whatever it is, you know? So yeah. it doesn't really matter to me what like, too many people think and I don't know I guess that's kind of what black metal has always been about really absolutely so. yep zero fucks I'm just gonna say it <laughs> yes zero fucks uh, I want to talk collabs because I love it when artists uh, collaborate particularly when they're favorites of mine and uh, you, you you just did a split with Vide which um, just sold out like that which I'm not surprised um, is there plans to do work with just for people who are watching too, Vide is a black metal artist, creates very different music to, to you, Vide Locker, but it's aligned with the same darkness. I'm, I'm going to put it like that. Um, are there plans to do more work with Vide and artists in the future that you can discuss? More so, not so much a split, but actually, you know, 
doing an album together or? You know, there's been, I've had talks with uh, other people. Um, uh, God. Matron from uh, Evangelist. I, we talked for a while to Ruben uh, about possibly like working together and collabing, like almost like it's a witch bones evangelist kind of mixed together, but it never ended up happening. I, I feel like one day it probably will. Um, but yeah, I'm always open to a lot of different stuff as long as I'm not like in the middle of doing something myself. Yeah. Like there's been other people that have definitely approached me that it's like, I'm open to everybody. Like I talk to everybody. I, I don't, you know, get rock star fucking shit where I'm like, Oh, I don't need to talk to you or anything like yeah. that. Like you, anybody can approach me. And if they have something that they want to shoot me as far as like a demo or they just want to, you know, show me some new music or whatever that they're listening to, I'm all for it. And, um, I have definitely had people that have shot me stuff and they're like, Hey, I'd like you to jump on as like guitar or like vocals and stuff. And, wasn't too into it to be honest though um Dionysian rights that was actually one of those situations where um my buddy was like hey I have this project and um I'm looking for somebody to do vocals like you and I was like kind of hesitant at first because I was like oh I'm not really sure and then I listened to it and I did it and then it, he sent it back to me I was like wow it's actually really good so you know sometimes it works out that way so I definitely plan on working with other people. I definitely would love to do something with Byte again. He's a really cool dude, mysterious, but. Very mysterious. <laughs> That's good news, good news. You, all your projects, you know, they, they're, they're warlike, they're ritualistic, extremely dark and aggressive. How, given that you've got so many going on, how do you differentiate each project? Say, you know, Omnikinetic, how does that separate from Next Womb, so to speak? And do they all have the same underlying themes? Not really. Like Next Womb, definitely. I write most of the music, but like the overall feel is from VCT Craig. You know, he yeah. uh, he's the drummer and he pretty much like all the weird ass song titles and stuff like that. That's all stuff that he's studied more or yeah. less, you know, and like he teaches me about a lot of it. And, um, you know, that's why it's it's more or less his project i would say but i just write the music for most of it you know right and uh i actually met him on craigslist like fuck, i don't know it's been two years now maybe two years ago and he just kind of opened my eyes to a lot of other music and things like that to actually start this project and kind of owe him a lot because um he kind of gave me the sound that I have today because like I listen to like a lot of different black metal and you know bands like Blasphemy and Black Witchery and stuff like that but he opened me up to a lot more of it and it enabled me to reinvent myself as like a guitarist or vocalist or something you know so but to uh, to get back to your question um they're all different mainly because it's like Omnikinetic I definitely feel like takes on the role of like I guess it's what I wanted to do with Witchbones, but never did do it. I don't know if that makes any sense. It does, it's like, yeah. And it's definitely, I try to not do the normal, like, black metal or death metal theme with that. Like, a lot of people say, like, the um, artwork is, like, shoegaze or whatever. Yeah. Which, to me, I'm like, that's cool. Like, I, if you want to reference that, because, like, it's never been about, you know, it's always been about being different with that project. And then Witchbones is definitely more of a, I don't know. I, I try to mimic bands the best that I can and it never ends up happening. So I luck out and it's like my own style. Like yeah. Witchbones is honestly, it's Helvatron mixed with Cryptopsy to me. That's mm -hmm. what I wanted. And then yeah. it ended up coming out what it is. So. Oh, well, it's, it works. It works. And as for the Omnikinetic uh, artwork, I absolutely loved that it looks so... I don't know, so psychedelic and pretty, and then it's just pure devastation when you put it on. I thought that was, um, I thought that was well done. I liked it. That um, was actually, um, sorry not to cut you off. That was actually Tom's idea from Repost Records. I was sending him things like that and what the record was initially about. And um, he kind of was like, why don't we take this in a different direction? Why don't we use some of the pictures that you sent me as far as like, you know, the flowers and like all that stuff. Because originally the album cover was um, like a bunch of wolves and like some other shit. And he was just like, oh, that's just so typical. He's like, why don't we like 
piss some people off more or less, yeah. you know? So he was, on the money. he was on the money. Yeah. He, he, he nailed it. So that's kind of where I go with it at this point. Good one. I want to talk to you about next zoom. <laughs> coming in early 21 and I noticed that you made a comment on your Instagram the other day around this being uh, most masterful and probably the hardest that you've worked on in an album which was interesting because you've done so much and everything that you do you just seem to put 110% in so where does that comment come from like what has made this uh, to be some of the hardest input that you've done? I think it's just the progression as a musician, because when I first started this out, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Like I, when I was younger, I've been in bands and stuff like that. We got some stuff recorded and nothing ever really happened until I just decided to do it myself. Yeah. And um, I actually had a project when I was like, I don't know, 19, 18 called Doom and Tree. And it kind of sounds like Witchbones now that I listen to it, but it, it was just very poorly done, you know, right. because I didn't know what I was doing. And as a, I've grown as like, I guess, a musician to a point, um, learning the processes of actually recording stuff correctly and taking your time with it. And um, it's just progression in general. So I feel like this record, it's just been my favorite record to listen to. I've listened to it over and over and over. It's pretty much, it's almost done. And um, it's just something that I'm just like, I guess it's just really proud of it. So. Yeah. Oh, I'm just hoping everybody else kind of goes in that same direction. But if not, you know, oh, well. As long as you're happy with it, I say. What, what, what is your recording process? Do you have a home studio? What, you know, how do you record your music? <laughs> um, I mean, I, it's, I, I call it my home studio, but it's literally my amp, my computer that I'm using right now, and a mic. And yeah. that's it. I do it like, you know, Varg style where it's like very raw. But um, I also will take my time to like mix and master it the way that I feel like I want it to sound, even if it comes out fucking shit. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then I literally record vocals in the bathroom because there's great acoustics in there. Yeah, right. Oh, that's really cool to know. I've always wanted to know that with the vocals because it just seems like you're coming out of a tunnel when you uh, when you're um, executing your vocals. That's for sure. So it makes sense that you're doing it in the bathroom. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I've always been very into stuff that sounds like it came straight out of a tunnel or a cave. Mm. Like, there's so many um, bands. I, I don't know if I pronounced their name right. It's actually my friend Chris's band, uh, Nuckus. I think it's Nuckus, Nuckus or Nuckus. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong or some shit. It'll probably give me shit for later. Their new uh, record that they just dropped, someone was saying, oh, this sounds like Witchbones, but like different. And I don't know if they like that or not, but I agreed to the sense that it's a very like cavernous sound where it's like, it literally sounds you're like in the catacombs recording yeah, definitely. stuff that I like. You know, Every that's time. the ones I like. So. so you mentioned briefly about uh, taking to the stage that that might be on the cards. Cause I've, I've always wanted to know with you whether these projects or any of your projects are going to be designed to to do live uh, gigs with, or are they going to remain mostly a recording project? I feel like Songa de la Luna definitely has potential to do that because we do have a live drummer now. Yeah. You know, uh, Matt, and, um, and we all live here. So there's no reason why we can't. Once this COVID shit finally ends, yeah. you know, however long it takes, um, that would be cool. I think that the people would really be into that. Um, next one was always talked about to do live but also like I don't know my drummer he's like older you know he, he's a great dude but like he's got his own shit going on and it's never something that we could like go tour I would never want to go tour I could play locally yeah. you know, or if it was like a big festival or like some shit like that and we were ready and we could do it sure but like you know with having two kids and stuff it's just like I can't do yeah. yeah and and speaking of festivals too because the usbm scene particularly on instagram it's such a great community and you all seem to uplift each other and share each other's content for the most part most of you do which is great to see do you guys ever discuss because here in australia we do have a lot of uh festivals for the lesser known bands you know when i say lesser known they're very well known here 
um, but they're not an international big headlining act. But And these festivals are some of the best that I go to over the big international acts. So do you guys ever talk about when all this COVID bullshit's done, putting something like that on in a sort of, what do you call it, convenient location to you all? Is that something that you ever discuss with other artists? Um, yeah, I've talked to, what is it, Total Death Over Mexico. I can't remember his name, but I've talked to him before, and he's, like, invited me to do Witchbones. I was like, dude, sorry, that's, like, a it's like a one-man project thing. Like, you know, if I tried, I guess I could get a band together to do it, but, you know, that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. But um, to answer your question, yeah, like, these things are talked about, absolutely. There's actually this really cool gig that's going to be going on in the forest. I'm not going. My kid's mom is going, though. And um, I think it's in California. I could be wrong, but there's bands like Goat Hex and I don't know, there's a bunch of bands that are playing. And it's really cool, but that was all organized between a bunch of people, you know, and talked about. So yeah, I mean, that's the plan. Like that's, we all want to get back to that normal, you know, where you can go to shows. Like I miss it, you know, going to see like local bands and stuff like that that have been here or, People might, I think Arch Goat was supposed to be here before this happened and that missed out on that shit, you know? Man, so. I would settle for a cover band right now. <laughs> I know, right? Like literally at work, all we do is watch live bands while yeah. we're there because it's like, this is as close as we're going to get right now. That's so. crazy. Hopefully it ends soon. Well, that's good to know. Um, yeah. But I'll be very jealous when you do do that because it's more than likely I won't be able to go. So I'll be sitting there having a cry. I want to go back to Witchbones, your release, uh, The Seas of Drogon. That's one of my favourite releases from you. And, and we're going back to this Doom sound because for me, this was so slowed down and Doom heavy um, compared to the other Witchbone stuff, which was already pretty Doomful. Is there plans to do more of that type Doom genre within any of your projects, but more so Witchbones because you've kind of already aligned to Doom within that? I feel like I kind of still have done that to a point with um, even this new record that came out, The Night of the Warlock. Like, listening to it, I feel like the vocals and the slowness of it is there, but it, there's definitely a lot more melody yes. than there was in the Season Dragon because... The Caesar Dragon, like, literally was me trying to mimic Helvetron the best that I could. That was literally me. I even told the, the guitar singer, I forget what his name is, but I, when I talked to him on Facebook, I was like, yeah, dude, this, like, record is me basically trying to do my best, you know, mimic of you guys or whatever. And I think he just kind of laughed. But, um, yeah, like, that is – that and, like, Void Meditation Cult, I feel like that's what the Caesar Dragon was, like – for me, it was me listening to their records over and over and going like, oh, I really like that really dark, evil sound Mm. and I need to make it in my own way. You know what I mean? And I don't know, I feel like I did a pretty good job with it. Patrick from Iron Bone had liked it enough to put it out, so that that was cool. Got it there somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Thank you. (laughs) trying to point. Uh, Mirror image. Uh, That's, uh, yeah, great album. Great album. Thank you. You know, we've talked about how much you've done. People are getting a pretty good idea if they don't know already how much you've put out as far as content. You now got this record label. What's the how? You know, how do you keep this artistic direction while focusing on uh, the building your record label, which is only fairly new? And have you had any major learnings so far with trying to do both? Uh, not really, because like the record label thing to me, it's like it's really new and I've kind of had help as far as like, like gems has done a really good job at helping me out with like layouts and stuff like that. Like I can do mock-ups of things, but like he'll um, help me with like my J cards or like any mock-up for like, you know, vinyl or things like that. Like I, I owe him a lot for that. I pre- very appreciate it. Um, but aside of that, it's mostly, I feel like it was just having the funds picking the right artists that I want to have on there and then just going out and doing it and then waiting. Um, There's definitely uh, strategies to it. Like, should I release it this day? Should I release it on uh, Bandcamp Fridays when they're going to start having that pretty soon where it's like all the money goes to the musicians. Um, How many tapes do I give to this person? How many should I give to that person? What do they want? You know what I mean? And I think that's my biggest goal with all of this because I have worked with labels that ended up pissing me off and like, you know, I 
my project like sold out and I ended up getting like one copy right. of the tape. Yeah. And hearing that they're like, oh, well, you just didn't ask for it. And I'm like, uh, really? Yeah. Like I was supposed to ask for that? Like there's supposed to be a deal in between that. But that was part of the learning process. So with me doing this as being an artist as well as starting this label, it's kind of more for me to be like putting the musician first. Like I tend to try to send out their tapes or yeah. vinyl to them before it even gets into the customer's hand because I feel like that's the most important part of it. It's like they should be treated, you know, equal in this yeah. because without the artist, you don't have a label. So that's been a big part of it, but it hasn't been too difficult, you know, so far, but it, I'm just so small. Like, you know, I'm doing 50 tapes, like it's a very small independent thing. So it's not a big deal, but it could progress. I don't ever want it to get to the point of it being like iron bonehead or like, uh, nuclear war now like that's not my goal in this because that would become very you know stressful to me and then it yeah. wouldn't be fun, as fun anymore I'm sure they love it but me personally as being a musician a father having full-time job like that would be too much yeah understandable understandable and sometimes it's it's great to have those small independent underground labels too it's great to see them pop up that's for sure yeah there's a lot of them now you know there's nihilistic noise propaganda that's probably I'm pretty good friends with Dan from that um, label. And uh, I think that's what kind of gave me the idea more than anything to do it because he was going through the same shit I was and was like, you know, he was, cause he's a musician too. Mm -hmm. So he just decided, he's like, I'm going to make my own label to put out my own shit as well as stuff that I want to personally hear. And yeah. that's it. You know? So. Yeah. So what's next for you? you know is there anything that we haven't covered as far as what's coming out next we know that next one's coming out in uh, 21 is there anything that you're hiding in the background that you can maybe give me the tip on <laughs> <laughs> um i think i'm done project wise i think i have enough stuff um i definitely we're definitely recording an uh a full-length album with our live drummer for sangre de la luna that's gonna happen yeah great uh, not a live album, but uh, a full a full length for that. That project seems people really seem to be into that, which is cool. Um, the next womb thing, Witchbones, you know, with that one, that's always like if I get a wild hair and I'm like, oh, I feel like recording right now, or you know, something that yeah. you never know with that one. Like I could just throw something out there, you know, uh, randomly um Dionysian rights we're working on a full length for that that will definitely be in 2021 um Calte's blue um that I work with Ryan with that's one of those projects too where he was like I have these tracks but I don't have vocals on them and it needs vocals and I was like we'll send it my way and I listened to it and I was like god this is really fucking amazing like this the the whole melody between in those songs is really what saves it like my you know, black metal vocals in the background or whatever are very hidden purposely because I just like love the melody so much. And uh, I think he wants to write a full length for that too. So it's just everything that I'm doing right now, I, I plan on like gradually doing stuff through 2021. Maybe not so many releases, but like, like one solid one for each project. Yeah. yeah, right. Actually, it's interesting talking about uh, Colt's Slut because I didn't realize that was a part of your resume as well. And um, I was just confirming things on Metal Archives when I was getting this interview prepared. And I was like, what? He's in another one? So is this, uh, is the music that you've done with this project so far, is that available on Bandcamp as well at the moment or? Cult is Blue? Yeah. Yeah, it's on, um, it's actually on uh, Blood Moon... We have our own band camp, but it's, uh, it was released through Blood Moon Productions and it's on his. It, there's three long tracks. So I would say it's more like, a, it's our demo, but it's kind of more of an EP, really. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that's a really cool project. It's very more, he calls it DSBM. I'm not really super fond of that because it doesn't sound like it to me. It sounds a little bit more just like atmospheric black metal, mm -hmm. but there's also like these vampiric, touch to it i think that's what we were going for was more of a vampiric vibe except in our own way i guess you can say 
But um, I love that project, and I, I hope we continue with that. He's supposed to write some music, so we'll see. He's in a lot of really cool projects. He's actually in um, Devouring Serpent with me, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's the bassist. I do the guitars, vocals. Tony does vocals. And then um, Q does um, the drums for that. He's actually also in, a, I don't know, have you heard of Diabolic Oath from Portland? I haven't. They, you should definitely check them out. They definitely probably have one of the record, best records of the year to me. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, really good stuff. Uh, but he drums for us too. So. Okay, good. Well, I've got some homework while I have a beer this afternoon. <laughs> cool. <laughs> you love so, it. It's really good. It's like war metal, but like different. It's good. Excellent. So before we wrap this up, I just want to talk about where people can get your albums from. You've also got some awesome merch. I've got um, quite a few bits of your merch as well. What, where's the best place for you as an artist for people to grab merch and records for you? Just the Witch Hand Productions Bandcamp. It's easiest for me. Like, I don't really do the big cartel thing, even though I probably wouldn't get any fees and stuff like that. But I don't know. Bandcamp is just so great to me. Like, yes. I didn't discover Bandcamp. I was really late on the Bandcamp thing. And um, uh, it's just easy because it's just all right there for me. I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's the best place to go find any of my music and, and things like that. Um, when I work with other labels like Iron Bonehead or, you know, Unpure Records and stuff like that, they'll send me my copies and then I just put them up as like distro, more or less. Yeah. Or they can go, you know, buy from them if they're in Europe. I suggest people, because like a lot of people will like buy one of my cassettes from Europe and they pay like 25 bucks. And I'm like, dude, could have just got it from, you know, the distro up there, but I, they might just not know that. So yeah, yeah. Save some money that way. That's for sure. Can can get uh, expensive with postage too. It sucks getting postage to Australia at the moment. It's awful. But, you know, that's out of your hands, absolutely. This has been awesome. I've really enjoyed doing this uh, with you and I appreciate your time. Is there anything you would like to leave for anyone that's uh, watching this interview? Any last words? Um, I just want to thank you. This is really awesome. Um, you know, okay. you actually gave me one of my first, like, interviews. Um, anything about my albums, my work and stuff like that. You were there from like the very beginning. So I really appreciate you. Oh, and thank I, you. That's very nice. Yeah. And um, I mean, just to my fans or, you know, who, anybody that gives a shit that listens, I, I appreciate all of them too. You know, people always have really nice things to say. I'm very personable. Like I, on my band camps and stuff like that, I'll send out messages, but like as if I'm talking to the person yeah. versus just like putting some random shit up. And, you know, people respond to it and it's like, you know, I guess in a weird way, it's just like it touches me because then it's like, you know, their understanding. That's what the whole point of me putting music out is that it's something that I'm feeling and I hope that somebody else can like grab a hold of that too and feel that same, you know, thing. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we certainly all appreciate what you do and, you know, what would we do without this, this sort of devastation in our lives? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. day, that's for sure so i want to thank you one more time thank you so much for this and for anyone who's watching if you're not familiar with vavoka please go and check out all of his projects they're up on Bandcamp. follow his social so you can keep up to date with everything he's very engaging and active on social media which is very important for bands these days because it's it's a fairly saturated scene so it's great that uh, you stand out and you um engage with your fans, which is really important. So thanks very much. Bye. Thank you.